Hey guys, McKeon from Wired to Fish, and you might know me from more of our kayak and bank content, but I finally decided to make an investment in my own boat, which I bought last season. So I've been able to run this now for one season, and as I get it ready for the next, I just want to do a little walkthrough on it because there was a lot of consideration that went into choosing the things I did to rig this boat out. So as I mentioned, a lot of consideration went into picking this boat and the components that I have that go along with it. And it's because it suits my style of fishing. As you know from the kayak stuff, I like to fish backwater lakes and stuff like that. And this is a little 16 and a half foot boat. So it's a smaller footprint, it's got a single axle trailer. So a lot of those small lakes in our area, I can slip this little boat in really easily. That said, you know, I've got a big pronounced keel, big bow on this boat, so I can put it in rough water as well too. You know, we've got some larger lakes in the area. I'm not afraid of rollers coming over the side of this boat either. So like I said, I'm gonna start from the back, move to the front and kind of show you a little bit of how I decided to build out this boat. All right, so this boat is a Lund 1650 Rebel XL. And I had a couple options on Boat Builder on Lund's website, and I kind of ran the gamut of boats, you know, number one being, what can I really afford? This is my investment. Um, but I also wanted the most fishable boat I could get. So a big thing for me was rod storage. And one awesome thing about this boat is I've got gunnel rod storage on both sides for rods that go up to seven and a half feet in length. So I can fit a lot of rods in this and I tend to carry a lot of rods with me because number one, I'm a multi-species angler. Number two, I'm a tackle junkie like you guys. So I'm always throwing the box at them, trying to figure stuff out, figure out a pattern on the lake. So this 16 and a half foot boat was the smallest boat with the best rod storage available. So it's not the biggest casting deck in the world, but I do have a casting deck, which is awesome. And on that casting deck, I've got some deep well storage for all my tackle, life jackets, stuff like that. And I've also got a big live well, which is really important to me too. So I can keep fish healthy and alive if I need to in a tournament situation, or you know, if I wanna keep some fish, they're gonna stay nice and cold and healthy and ready to be filleted in there. So the Rebel XL line comes in a side console and a full windshield and a tiller model. And I went with the tiller model. And the reason I went with the tiller model is because, like I said before, I'm a multi-species angler. That's one thing about it. So I do have a lot more versatility with the tiller, believe it or not. The other thing about it is I got the whole boat in front of me, which is something I really like. So that's kind of why I decided to, to run a tiller. It's more of that multi-species angle and also just a whole boat's worth of room to roam around and store things. The other thing is with the multi-species angling, I like to back troll. So I've got wave whackers here. I'm going to be trolling the boat backwards like this. And I do that a lot with my Traxxas and I can talk about that a little bit too. But sometimes in bigger waves or a current situation or something like that, I got to use the big motor. And so you can't do that with a council boat. You can't go backwards very efficiently with a council boat. So this makes back trolling very easy. And that's something that I do a lot when I'm walleye fishing. So this particular tiller motor is a Mercury four stroke. It's a 60 horsepower command thrust. This little 60 can get this boat up on pad and plan pretty quickly. And to make the very most out of this boat and motor combo, I actually upgraded to a stainless steel prop. This is a Mercury Spitfire prop, it's a four blade. And really what I get from that, like I said, is that quick and easy hole shot. I'm up on pad in an instant, and it also gives me maximum boat control. So as I mentioned, I utilize back trolling when I'm fishing a lot of times. And so for that, I rely really heavily on this Traxxas motor. So this is a 70 pound, 24 volt Minn Kota Traxxas. I could back troll with the big motor and I do have the ability to dial down my revolutions per minute on this motor, but oftentimes it's too fast. I might wanna go just a half a mile an hour or 0.8 miles per hour. Well, this thing lets me dial in the speed to a T, like I said. 0.8 miles per hour, whatever it is I need to run, I can really dial in the speed of my boat, back trolling with the Traxxas. So as we make our way to the other side of the boat, we've got even more added boat control with this cute little eight foot talon. It's a shallow water anchor. And these things are pretty invaluable. Uh, the first thing that I use it a lot for is when I'm backing the boat in at the landing. It's really convenient for me to just have this roll off the roller trailer uh, utilize my rope and then I can put the shallow water anchor down and it's going to sit right next to the dock waiting for me to go park my truck, jump in and go fishing. That's one really convenient thing about this. The other nice thing is I've got a little foot fob on the bow. 
So, you know, I'm fishing in shallow water and I come across a big school of fish or we're whacking them one after another. Well, it's time to talon down. So the reason I went with an eight foot talon is uh, number one, probably for storage. I've got just a tiny little garage. that's big enough for my boat to fit in, which is really nice. And so as I'm backing this in, when I'm done fishing for the day, I'm not clipping the top of the garage door with my talon. Also on this boat, I don't have the option of doing a tilt bracket. So I could have a longer talon if I had a tilt bracket. I don't. The other convenient thing about it is I really don't need to shallow water anchor um, anything deeper than eight feet for the kind of fishing that I do. So this little eight footer is just nice and flush on the back of the boat and it works for everything that I do. So as we make our way across the boat here, we got to talk about electronics, of course. And um, I'm a big fan of the Helix line. Uh, that Hummingbird provides here. So I've actually got three Helix 10s in this boat. And um, I like that because I like to run dedicated screens. So, you know, I might be running 2D and mapping on this unit, and then I'm running all side scan on this one here. So I've got HD mapping with Lake Master on here. So I've got a real clear picture of finding spots and navigating safely, uh, making waypoints and just staying fishable. This is a really user-friendly unit. Again, that's why I really like the Helix unit. It's simple, easy to use, it's powerful. They're all etherneted together. They're all networked together. And so what makes that so important for me is this is where I spend a lot of my time scouting, looking for fish and looking for spots. So say I'm, you know, I got the map here, 2D going, I got side scan going. Well, if I look out 60 feet on side scan, I see a tree or a school of fish, I'm going to scroll over, make a waypoint. That waypoint's going to show up on my bow unit because what I'm going to do is if I see a school of fish or like I said, a piece of structure, I'm going to stop this motor, run up to the front, deploy my trolling motor. That waypoint is ready and waiting for me on that front unit so I can make a cast right to that piece of structure or right to that school of fish that I saw from the back here. So my Helix units are mounted on this nice little console here. Right off the bat, you can see I've got some room for tool storage, a couple different pairs of needle nose pliers there. Um, these are all my fuses and a few things, bilge pump, horn, master power, yada, yada. And I've just got this little compartment here. I keep sunscreen, sunglasses, random things. Then of course, a first aid kit, something you gotta have in your boat. And this little one is perfect. It's just packed full of stuff and it fits in that little console like that, which is convenient. So I like having this little storage thing right here at the helm. Like I said, sunglasses, sunscreen, a lot of stuff just readily available. So another thing that I'm really proud of that I installed myself is this little cup holder. Um, if you look at the layout of the boat, there's cup holders kind of conveniently located all around, but there isn't one for the driver. And I am a coffee drinker when I get going in the morning, when I'm driving around looking for spots and looking for fish and stuff like that. So I need a place where I can store my coffee without spilling it. So luckily TH Marine makes a convenient little cup holder there that I actually use quite a bit. So one thing that I touched on that I kind of wanted to elaborate on uh, was power. Like I said, I, I upgraded this system when I got it rigged out at Lund to a 24 volt system. I've got two battery compartments. One I have dedicated for my cranking battery uh, for my big motor. And then I've got these 12 volt Dakota lithium batteries. So together they make for 24 volts. The really awesome thing about these batteries, um, they're lightweight. I mean, I got two of them here, which is about the weight of one, but they fit in this battery compartment, which is made for just one battery. So, okay, so I have one 12 volt battery. I need two. So if I have to put one in here, that means I'd have to put the other one, take up some more room for storage. So the thing I love about these Dakota lithium batteries is they're smaller. I can fit them both in here. Uh, so that was a really big thing for me. The other nice thing about that is these are light and it's not taking up a bunch of weight in the bow, which can oftentimes throw off, like I said, getting up on pad or maybe I'm running on one side a little too heavy. Well, the nice thing about these, like I said, they're light and they take up a small amount of space. So not only can I, fit two 12 volt batteries in this little compartment. I also have my onboard charger and this is a Minn Kota precision charger. It's a three bank charger. I'm actually charging all three batteries in my boat with this. One thing you can do, which is really cool is there's different modes on this. My cranking battery is not a lithium battery. My lithium batteries are lithium batteries. So they require different charge cycles and I have the ability to do that with this precision charger. Um, so yeah, this little compartment is awesome. I'm powering everything in my boat, essentially electronics and trolling motor wise, 
uh, with my 24 volt system. And then I've got slick and easy charging with this Minn Kota Precision Charger. So as I mentioned, I've got all my rod storage dedicated for rods in the back. So I've got tons of rods in the back in that gunnel storage. I need some place where I'm going to put all my tackle. Um, this little boat's actually got quite a bit of storage to it. Like I said, I kind of dedicate this one more to safety things, throwable life jacket. We've got little buggy bumpers or whatever for tying up to a dock. I do put some tackle in there, but I've got a lot of tackle and I like to have it with me. So you kind of got to stay organized. That's one thing. But with that, I've got the ability to pack a ton of tackle in this thing. And I don't have it all in here right now because I'm just getting this boat ready for the season again. But as you can see, I, I got quite a bit of tackle in here for a little boat in one compartment. So I got to talk about my guy here. This is Minn Kota Altrex, and this is an 80 pound thrust trolling motor, obviously a bow mount trolling motor. I spend a ton of time on the bow and I rely on this motor for a lot of different things. I'm absolutely in love with this motor. So first things first, spot lock. That's an incredibly accessible feature uh, right here on my foot pedal. I actually have a fob too that I use a lot. So I could put this thing down, be in the back of the boat fishing with my fob. Meanwhile, this thing's up here doing everything I could ever ask it to do. Catch a fish, hit it in spot lock with the fob. You know, I can steer the thing obviously with the fob too. And this thing is just always up here doing exactly what I need it to do. And I went with a cable drive system mainly because I'm inspired by, you know, the Bass Pros and stuff like that, but it's a really reliable system. Um, like I said, I got this boat up in the lily pads and the slop and stuff like that, and then I'm out in rough waves, uh, spot locked down and, and trying to catch walleyes. Uh, this is kind of a, I wouldn't say overkill, but it's a big, powerful motor for this boat, but that's exactly what I need for the kind of fishing that I like to do. So, again, this is my guy. I got a ton of faith in this thing, and it lets me fish where I want and how I please. So I guess the last thing we can talk about here, we already touched on, you know, um, my Helix units. I've got another one up here on the bow. One great thing about this too, you notice is that it's elevated quite a bit. I'm a taller guy, uh, so it's really nice to have all these buttons kind of at my fingertips. I'm not squatting all the way down the deck of boat. And what allows me to do that is this KVD Kong mount, this TH Marine KVD Kong mount. So it's a really rigid mount and it gets my unit up off the boat a little bit. And again, like I said, it makes it more accessible for me, it makes it easy to see. And then this year, going into this season, I'm going to be running Mega Live. So that's, you know, something that you really pay attention to when you're fishing. And to have that elevated and up in your face, that just means you can really break down that screen a lot more clearly. So what I really want to reiterate with the decisions I made to buy this boat in particular is I was able to save some money by going with a smaller boat. This is a nice little price point boat, Lund 1650 Rebel XL. So I saved some money on my boat so I could save money to put towards the electronics I need to again fish the way I like to fish. So this little shell of a boat, you know, it's a big open floor plan, but with that I've got tons of fishability with my Talon, with my trolling motors, and all my Helix units. So, I wanted to save a little bit of money on the boat so I could add fishability with my electronics. Again, this is my boat. This is going to be my second season with it. Look out for some more wired to fish videos with me in the Rebel XL.